Hello everyone, so today we're going to go over section 4.2, Introducing Permutations and Factorial Notation. So a permutation is an arrangement of distinguishable objects in some definite order. For example, if we have two objects A and B, then there are two permutations AB and BA. Let's look at some examples, starting with example 1. So suppose we have four children who are lining up to go to the washroom. So in the first spot, there are four possibilities. In the second spot, there are three children left. And then in the third spot, there are only two children. And finally, the last space, uh, there's only one child left. So if we multiply these four numbers together, we can see that there are 24 arrangements. Example two, so suppose we have um, six different songs and they are each going to be played once and the question is asking how many different orders are possible. So we start with six different songs and then we'll have five left to choose from and then four and then three, then two, then finally the last uh, spot can only have one song choice. So if we multiply these six numbers together, we'll get 720 different orders. Okay. Now the try question is very similar. We have five different books, math, chemistry, physics, English, and biology. So that will simply be five times four times three times two times one, and we'll get 120 ways that the books can be arranged on a shelf. So of course, we don't want to have to write this out every time, this, uh, for example, six times five times four times three times two times one. So we have a notation for that, and it's called the factorial notation. So for example, instead of writing five times four times three times two times one, we can simply write five and then an exc exclamation mark like this. And that will give us 120. Okay. And that is the same for um, all these different numbers. So of course, one factorial, for example, would just be one. 2 factorial is 2 times 1, which is 2. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. And we have already seen in the previous examples, 4 factorial was 24, 5 factorial is 120, and 6 factorial was 720. What we might notice as well is that 3 factorial times 4 is 24. And then 24 times 5 gives us 5 factorial, which is uh, 120. So to summarize what, I, what we just saw, we have, for example, 5 factorial is equal to 5 times 4 factorial. And that's how we get 120 here which is, of course, 5 times 24. Okay. This allows us to simplify some of the questions we'll encounter. Now, one other important note is that 0 factorial is equal to 1. Now, if we had, instead of numbers, uh, some algebraic expression using factorials. For example, we have n factorial. Then we start with n, and then we descend towards 1. So this will be n times 1 less than n, which is n minus 1, times n minus 2. Oops, sorry about that. And so forth. And then we get to 3 times 2 times 1, something like that. Likewise, if we have 
n plus 1 factorial, then this will start at n plus 1, multiplied by n, multiplied by 1 less than that, which of course is still n minus 1. And then it keeps going for a bit, and then we get to 3 times 2 times 1. Likewise for n minus 1, so we start with n minus 1, 1 less than that will be n minus 2, 1 less than that will be n minus 3, and again we keep counting down towards 1. So in general, this is how we can expand such algebraic expressions involving the factorial. Okay. Another important fact about um, the factorial is that n is defined for the set of whole numbers only. That is, n should be 0, 1, 2, 3, and so forth. Um, and once again, 0 factorial is 1. So quick note about a number like 10 factorial, this can simply be um, found using a calculator. So 10 factorial in the calculator gives us 3,628,000 and then 800. For some of the expressions, we can simplify before evaluating. So for example, here we have 12 factorial divided by 9 factorial times 3 factorial. So just like what we saw before, we can start counting down. So we can, instead of 12 factorial, we can write it as 12 times 11 times 10 times 9. And we can keep going. We can write times 8 times 7 times and so forth. But instead, we're going to stop there and just write this as 9 factorial, because we know 9 factorial simply means 9 times 8 times 7, and we can keep on counting downwards. But we're going to stop there because, as we can see, in the denominator, we have 9 factorial. So numerically, the 9 factorial in the numerator and the one in the denominator are the same. So what that allows us to do is simply Uh, to eliminate these two 9 factorials from both the numerator and the denominator, so the expressions become a lot simpler. In the numerator, we simply have 12 times 11 times 10, and 3 factorial is easily evaluated. 3 times 2 times 1, of course, is just 6. And here we can further simplify. 12 divided by 6 gives us 2. 6 divided by 6 gives us 1. So really, this is just 2 times 11 times 10, and we'll get 220 as our final answer. Okay. So this kind of expanding uh, partially a factorial no a notation is, is going to be useful for some of the questions that we counter um, below. So if we look at example 4, we can see that we have n plus 3 times n plus 2 factorial. Notice that n plus 2, and then if we add 1, that's n plus 3. So um, this can be simplified to a single factorial that starts with n plus 3. So this is just going to be n plus 3 factorial. Now for the next one, if we have some kind of expression where there is a uh, factorial in the numerator and factorial in the denominator, we generally want to expand the larger one of the two, which in this case is going to be n plus 1. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So we have n plus 1. 1 less than n plus 1 is going to be n. And then 1 less than n is n minus 1. Notice that is the expression that we have in the denominator, so we're going to stop there and just write n minus 1 factorial. And then we're going to divide this by n minus 1 factorial, which means, of course, that the n minus 1 factorial expressions um, gets eliminated. And we're just left with n plus 1 times n. That's it.
Example five is very similar. So once again, the expression in the numerator is greater. So we're going to go ahead and expand that and counting down from n plus 2 towards n. So we have uh, n plus 2, and then n plus 1, and then we have n factorial. We will stop there. And that will be divided by n factorial, which means, once again, we can eliminate them, the n factorials. So go ahead and do that here. And the expression simplifies to just n plus 2 times n plus 1. Okay. And then in the next example, notice that this time around the expression in the denominator is greater. So we're going to expand that one instead. So we're going to expand n factorial and not n minus 3 factorial. So it's a little bit different. So n minus 3 factorial is still going to stay the same in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we're going to start with n and then start counting down. So n and then one less than that will be n minus 1, one less than that will be n minus 2, and finally n minus 3 factorial is where we'll stop. From there, it's very similar to the previous example, the n minus 3 factorials will eliminate each other. And so in the numerator, we're simply going to be left with 1. And the denominator will be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. So this one is a little bit different. Most of the question, however, will involve numbers rather than algebraic expressions. So they are more likely to look like, for example, this one right here, 43 factorial divided by 40 factorial. So what we can do is expand the larger number, so 43 in this case, this will be 43 times 42 times 41 times 40 factorial divided by 40 factorial, which means the 40 factorial to get eliminated. There we go. And so we simply have 43 times 42 times 41. And then we can use a calculator for that part. And that will give us 74,046. Okay. Expression on the right is very similar. Once again, we're going to expand the largest factorial. In this case, it is the 37. So we have 37 times 36 times uh, 35 times 34 times 33 factorial. And that will be divided by 33 factorial and then multiply by 4 factorial. Okay, so in this case, what we're going to do is just uh, evaluate 4 factorial. So 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 24. We saw that on the previous page. And then the 33 factorials will be eliminated. And now we can multiply the four numbers in the numerator together. That will give us uh, 100 and... Actually, sorry about that. 1,585,080 all over 24. And then we can divide those. And our final answer is going to be 66,045. So one last kind of example, and we will go back to the algebraic expression once again involving n. And now we're going to make them equations so we can solve for n. And it's a little bit more complicated, these ones. Okay. So if we look at the first one here, uh, if we compare n factorial and n minus 2 factorial, we can see that n factorial is greater. So we'll start by expanding it. So we have n times n minus 1 
times n minus 2 factorial will stop there because it matches what we have in the denominator. So that will be divided by n minus 2 factorial. And that's going to be equal to 90 on the right-hand side. And of course, the idea here is that the n minus 2 factorials will eliminate each other. So on the left-hand side, we simply have n times n minus 1, and that's equal to 90. So if we were to multiply this out using the distributive property, we can see that we actually get a quadratic equation. So n squared minus n equals 90, which means that n squared minus n minus 90 is equal to 0. And from there, we can factor. We'll have n minus 10, n plus 9 is equal to 0, which means that n is equal to either 10 or negative 9. Now, negative 9 will be rejected as an answer because n, as part of a factorial, needs to be positive. Next question is quite similar. Only difference is that there is a 3 in the front of the question. So what we can do is divide both sides by 3. So we'll have n plus 1 factorial over n minus 1 factorial. And on the right-hand side, we're going to have 42. Okay. So just like the previous example, we're going to expand n plus 1. So we have n plus 1 times n times n minus 1 factorial. Once again, it matches the denominator, so we'll stop expanding. The right-hand side is still 42, of course. And we can eliminate the n minus 1s. So here we have, sorry about that, uh, n plus 1 times n is equal to 42. Now instead of solving this quadratically um, using algebra, we can also just think about we have two numbers that are one apart and a product of 42. So that means the only numbers that really fit here are 7 times 6, and that's going to be equal to 42. So the answer is just going to be n is equal to 6. And that's a more intuitive way of doing the same question. And so that's it. Uh, we have introduced the idea of a permutation and also what the factorial notation does, both numerically and also algebraically. And that's it for today. Uh, once again, thank you for listening.